Guys, good morning. Um, I just wanted to get on while I'm doing my makeup because that's the time that I have today. And I actually love watching people do their makeup. I find it very interesting. I'm not a makeup artist. This is just what I do for me. I'm not going to tell you all the products and give you all the things. I just wanted to chat while I'm doing my makeup because, I don't know, I like watching that and I figure other people might too. FYI, you're in my bathroom. Welcome to my bathroom. You are on an Amazon box and my laptop because that's how we're rolling today. So um, in with my coaching clients and just friends in general lately, um, I have gotten a lot of questions surrounding getting kids to eat healthy food and then just moms eating healthy while they have young kids. And um, my friends and clients are always like, how do you get your kids to eat healthy and ask for healthy things? Like my kids ask for probiotics and um, they also ask for salads and stuff and fruit. And I'm not like this, you know, prodigy parent or anything getting my kids to ask for those things. I kind of just stumbled upon it, if you will. Um, when I was pregnant with my daughter, I decided to do a Whole30 diet because if you've ever watched anything from me or know me personally, I ate like a five-year-old and didn't like vegetables, didn't like all the things. And so a friend of mine did a Whole30 and posted about it for the whole 30 days. And I went, okay, well, I guess I need to try that because at that time my daughter was almost to the stage where she was going to start eating. She was a baby. She was going to start eating. And I didn't want her to see me eating terrible food all the time and only drinking Coca-Cola and let that be her lifestyle. So I knew that I had to start with me and I had to you know, do what I model, what I wanted her to do. So, um, started with whole 30, taught myself to cook through whole 30. Um, and so that meant that when she started to eat, um, healthy food and stuff, or when she started to eat, eat from the moment that she started to eat in front of her, was things that I was cooking, um, you know, the, the whole foods and healthy diet and little bit of sugar. I was kind of a freak about it at first. I'm not going to lie. Like I know, at, I think it was her first birthday party. Somebody brought her like a normal cake from the store. And I was like, Oh no, absolutely not. I made her this one with that's sweetened with, I don't know, maple syrup or whatever. And I was a Nazi and I'm no longer a Nazi. I've, you know, learned. Um, I have two kids now and I feel like with every kid, you kind of learn a little bit more and you relax a little bit more. Um, so some of you might be laughing at that. Um, I'm going to turn on the chat. I usually hop on on my phone lately and I can't see the chat today. I can see the chat if you guys want to ask questions or whatever. Um, feel free. But anyway, so point being, um, my daughter has never known the difference. My son has never known the difference. And I've gotten really good at things that I'm craving, like foods that I'm craving. I um, So I went from Whole30 to Paleo because to me, Paleo is much easier than Whole30 because it's not zero sugar, but it's natural sugars like um, maple syrup and honey and things like that. And so um, we kind of went that route. And so what I do is anything that I'm craving, I look up paleo, whatever, like paleo um, brownies or paleo. Um, I really like chicken pot pie and things like that. So now I've kind of gotten, you know, recipes and stuff. But when I meal plan, I, I'm typically meal plan like once a week on Sundays and I just do one grocery run. But when I meal plan, I don't think about what my kids will or will not eat, to be honest with you. I never have. Well, I have when they were a baby, you know, I, I got like 
like soft foods and things like that. But when my kids are five and seven now, and so when I meal plan, I just meal plan. I just go with whatever sounds good. And I don't really think too much about whether it's kid friendly because my thought process is, and um, this may or may not work for you. I'm just sharing what works for me. Um, my thought process is, um, you know, they're going to learn to eat what's in front of them and it's okay. If they don't like it, they still have to try it. And then they know what they like and what they don't like. And they also know that I'm not going to make anything special for them. What, what is in front of them is what's to eat. So if they're hungry, then that's what they eat. And um, if they choose not to eat it, then they will be a lot more hungry at the next meal. <laughs> um, for breakfast, I tend to give them their vitamins and we have like a probiotic um, drink, one that supports happy gut and happy and in turn happy mood. Um, I've noticed since we started doing that, that there are less tantrums and things. Um, and breakfast is kind of like, I keep staple things. Like they really like, um, I've done granola and dairy free, um, uh, yogurt. So I'll put granola, um, in a bowl and then just pour the dairy free yogurt in it. My son, um, reacts pretty heavily to dairy, um, takes a few days, but after um, like two or three days straight of eating dairy, he will develop a cough that is really hard to get rid of. Well, we have to do like the nebulizer and um, I don't use like a medication and nebulizer. I, I'm sharing all kinds of tips today. This is fun. <laughs> I um, found a recipe for, um, what is it? Uh, food grade high hydrogen peroxide. I have like a ratio that is safe that I've run by my natural path mm -hmm. doctors to make sure that it's safe. But um, that has worked wonders when he does um, develop a cough from dairy or from the environment, whatever. Um, so, but anyway, back to breakfast. Um, so sometimes it's that, sometimes it's eggs. They're really picky about how they're cooked. Um, <laughs> they're foodies. So I don't do eggs a lot just because they're so picky on how they're cooked. Um, and it kind of changes by the day. So anyway, but we have like a few, a few staple things, um, for breakfast. And then lunch is usually like some type of quick heat up, um, leftover meat. And then I just do like hummus and vegetables and fruits and just kind of make like almost like a charcuterie board kind of style um for lunch that's almost all the time like especially school lunches and stuff i'll do like some type of um meat and kind of the same deal like they have bento boxes and that's kind of what they what they really like um, and I try to change it up with different like hard cheeses. And um, sometimes we do chicken, like rotisserie chicken. Sometimes we do like a sushi thing. So I'll do like rice roll ups or something like that. Oh, hi, Sarah. Um, what did she say? I heard a few times recently that if you have a picky eater, a zinc supplement helps. Oh, I have heard that actually. Um, so zinc is actually in my kiddos, um, multivitamin. So, um, and if you want, I guess I could link, uh, the vitamins that they take because they've been highly recommended by, um, natural paths and th things like that. And you can just get them, I think on full script. Um, so anyway, that might be complicated. I don't know. Um, let me know if you want it and I'll figure out how to let you know how to get them. Um, where was I? Okay. So for dinner, that's more of what I meal plan around. And like I said, I literally just pick like five recipes 
that sound good to me. Like oftentimes it's, it's super random. I'll just get on the internet and say paleo, whatever sounds good, fajitas or um, shepherd's pie or my mother-in-law made like the best kale and quinoa salad last night. And I'll be honest, do my kids sit down and go, Whoa, I love this. No, I have to tell them eat your food eat your food. And what I typically do is they usually find something on their plate that they really like and they want to go to that first. And so what I do is I say, you can have that thing on the plate that you like after you have two or three bites of this other thing that you're obviously avoiding. Um, so my kiddos have different tastes and stuff. What does she say? Eggs are, I only eat eggs in what? Oh, in cake? <laughs> That's hilarious. I only eat eggs in cake. Um, so, that's, so what do you eat for breakfast, Sarah? I would love to know. Um, because I feel like everyone feels like they just have to have eggs for breakfast, especially if they eat paleo. Everyone's like, oh my God, I'm so sick of eggs. Um, but there is like grain-free granola and stuff like that that is paleo. Like you can get creative. And I even have friends that eat salad for breakfast, which I do not eat salad for breakfast. There was a time when I was on Whole30 that I ate salad for breakfast, but that's not my normal. I'm, I'm not a freak. <laughs> so, um, so anyway, yeah, for so that's kind of my trick is that if there is something and usually there is something on their plate that they want to eat more than um, anything else. And so I just say, look, you know, eat that first or eat, eat a couple of bites of this and then you can have a bite of that. Eat a couple of bites of this. And so what it does is it teaches them that concept. Like I'm not always going to have to be the voice of reason while they're eating. Like I don't want to make them have eating disorders. And I do let them have sugar and things like I'm not a Nazi mom. Like I used to be. Um, they do have like your typical stuff and, um, bacon cheddar ranch tater tots. <laughs> hey girl, that's fine. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> I love me some hash browns. That's my favorite ever. And I have an air fryer and it makes it way too easy to make some tater tots, girls. So I'm right there with you. I would, I would have that too. The gym in the morning. So sometimes when I come home, I'm like starving and I'm just like, whatever's in front of me. Um, and that's okay. So that kind of brings me to my next um, point is whatever's in front of you, like, right? Like, so if you want to start eating healthier, don't put processed mat, bad sugary foods in your pantry, because if you're anything like me, if you get bored, if you get emotional about something, you will go to the worst thing that you can find. And if the worst thing that you can find is a healthy thing that you put in your pantry. Like I have RX bars and things like that. And that's like the worst thing, then it's not so bad, right? Like if it's not available and I have to like get in my car and pack up the kids and make them put their shoes on, you know how that is. Mama is putting shoes on. is like a thing. Um, let me get my eyeliner. This should be interesting doing eyeliner on a video. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, so, but yeah, so, I mean, just like pantry staples for us is, like I said, the granola, um, healthier snack bars that don't have a lot of sugar and processed stuff in it. Um, let's see what else my, I, I like, and my husband likes ramen noodles every once in a while. So I found at Costco, they have like just the noodles. That's, I think they're made out of like millet and ancient grains and stuff, but they don't taste that much different than actual ramen noodles. And so I buy the ramen noodles just for the packet. And, um, I put like the packet in those healthier 
ramen noodles that aren't as like processed and are actually made of like decent things for your gut. And so they think that they're having ramen noodles, but they're actually having um, like something that's fairly healthy. And I haven't researched what's in the packet. I'm not going to worry that much about it, but you know, that's kind of my go-to. And um, for when they, when they want like a very rare <laughs> ramen noodle snack. Um, and then let's see what else I make, um, my own nut milk, like, um, uh, sometimes I do, well, it's not nut milk, but, um, oat milk. Sometimes I do cashew milk. Sometimes I do almond milk. I have an almond cow and a Mio mat machine. Um, if you're on my YouTube, there are a few different videos actually on those machines and how they work and which one I like and all that stuff. So if you want to know more about that, check out that video. Um, but that is kind of the gist of how we do things. And I always put something green and something um, healthy on their plate next to, uh, you know, lean protein or, you know, even, even if we're doing hamburgers or whatever, sometimes we even do pizzas with cauliflower crust and they don't really know the difference, you know, like at first they might, like if your kids are used to eating like normal pizza and stuff, they're probably obviously going to taste the difference. But after a while, like even if you start putting like slowly <laughs> ease yourself into the healthier version of something. So like I said, a great hack is to, like if you have like a go-to recipe, Google that recipe paleo version, and it just switches a few ingredients and it makes all the difference in the world in their nutrition. So, um, and then also like syrups and things, like if you're gonna make like a paleo pancake or things like that, a lot of people just get the syrup that they don't pay attention to the ingredients and it's not actually real syrup and real syrup maple syrup is actually pretty decent for you if you get the real stuff and not like the fake um whatever <laughs> brands that put a bunch of junk in it um so i guess i'm not gonna do my eyeliner on <laughs> on video should i try if you're watching and you want me to do eyeliner on video, let me know. <laughs> I don't know. I just felt like this was fun. Um, so what, how long am I going? I don't want to like make this video ridiculously long. So anyway, I guess I will end there. Um, but that is what I do. I literally just don't think about kid food versus food and just mainly keeping just the healthy whole foods around so that that's what you have to eat. And if you really want to go off the bandwagon per se and get like unhealthy processed food and stuff, you've got to go out and get in your car and make them put their shoes on and go get it. And that's like a commitment. So do you really want it? Do you really want that unhealthy food or would you rather just eat something in your pantry that's already there? So I hope that this has been helpful. Um, let's see. I don't out of boredom or feelings, but I go from zero to hungry real quick. Me too. Once I do, my brain completely shuts off. This is a thing. Yes, it is a thing. Um, I can't make decisions on what I want and cooking is not happening. Okay. So, um, switch. You've made the hardest switch with the ramen. I use bone broth instead. Yes. I actually, um, I actually make my own bone broth sometimes in my head. I do it all the time, but I don't actually do it all the time. Um, bone broth is super expensive at the stores now and it's super easy to make. So if you would like to, the recipe, maybe I'll put it on my blog. I got a, a really awesome recipe from a farmer like several years ago, and that's the one that I use. But yes, bone broth is so much better for your gut health and things. Um, but yes, if you have, Sarah, if you have a um, Costco, check out the, just the ramen noodles. It's like a pack of like 12, I think. I don't know, of the like cakes. And then I just buy the seasoning, like the regular ramen noodles seasoning and throw away the processed noodles that come with the ramen noodles. But yeah, so 
as far as like getting hungry super quick, that I, it happens to me all the time. And what I do is I, like I said, I keep just snacky things like, um, like nuts. I, I buy in bulk, like, um, I love cashews, um, and almonds and even like chocolate covered almonds, but something that has some type of protein in it, um, will satisfy hunger super quick. And even just fruits and avocado. I like avocado and the siete, is that how you say it? Chips um, that are cassava flour instead of corn, because corn will wreck your gut real quick. If you don't believe me, go eat a lot of Mexican food. We live in Texas. And then see if you don't want to take a nap and not feel good for the rest of the day. Like you don't want to go run a marathon after you eat corn. Prove me wrong. Um, but anyway, so that kind of takes out that like emotional eating that and meal planning, like already having a meal plan, like knowing what you're going to make and then getting groceries once a week that you have all the ingredients for that meal takes out that, oh, I don't want to cook or it's not happening. Like she said, um, and makes it so much easier. And then I always make one of the meals, something that I can just throw together in like five minutes. Um, that's already like pretty easy. So Googling like super easy paleo meals is amazing to have when you are like hangry. I do not have little power to throw away to delicious noodles and the money I spent on them. So that would be a fail for me. Okay. Well, you know, <laughs> you do you. Um, I know it's, uh, I noticed that the ramen noodles went from like 10 cents to like 30 cents, but you know, to me, I don't know. My health is worth the, the 30 cents or whatever, but if that's your like one thing, then keep your ramen noodles and eat whole foods the rest of the time, girl. Like, cool. I just realized that this video is like 22 minutes long. This was super fun. Maybe I should do this more and maybe actually finish my makeup. I'm, I'm really surprised my kids are home right now and they're upstairs happily playing and they have not come in here and asked me for 5 million things. So I'm going to call this a win and I'm going to hop off. But if you want any of links to the, any of the things that I mentioned, I'll try to drop them in the description. If you loved this discussion and you want more like this, then I have a Facebook group. You can hop over in. I put the link in the description and I post fun memes and we have discussions every Every Thursday. Today is Thursday, so I'm going to hop over in there and share a few more things with my group, my people, um, and they can, we can all kind of powwow and give more than just my opinion because just listening to me is kind of boring after a while, let's be honest. So I hope you have the best day. And oh, and also if you struggle, if um, <laughs> stay there, yes, I, I might hide in here and like do way, way more makeup than I need today just because it's fun. Um, but, uh, what was I saying? Oh, if you struggle to find like me time in every day, and if you just went, what is me time? I have a 10 minutes for me challenge over there in the guide section in the group. If you just click on the group and then join the group, whatever, and then um, there's a guide section and I have like a five day challenge that lines out like exactly how do you find me time in every day and what do you do in that me time? Because I know for me, when I first challenged myself to have 10 minutes of me time a day, I was like, first of all, what do I even do with 10 minutes of me time every single day? And like, how do I parlay that into affecting the rest of my day and actually showing up well? So if you need that, it's there. It's free. There's no catch. There's no gotcha. It's just there because I like to help a sister out. So I hope you guys have the best day. Um, and like I said, if you want to know where I get any of the things that I mentioned, let me know and I will find them for you. Have the best day. Bye-bye.